don't know, is there sort of like a one-on-one, like this is the shot that you always have to get or the most important or like, you the know, money is the shot. intro? You guys know the answer to that, to what the most important shot yeah, is. Yeah, just say what you mean, Joe. <laughs> it's the no, shot. I'm the thing asking, you maybe a second take. Up. I'm not going to assume because I don't know. I'm not on set. <laughs> I don't direct, so I don't know. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone, for anyone out there that wants to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at oplpodcast at gmail.com. Send us an email and we'll get back to you. Yeah, and today we are going to be speaking to Dick Bush. Dick is an award-winning adult film director. Uh, you may know some of his work, including Power Bangers, Star Wars The Last Temptation, How I Fucked Your Mother, Poon Raider, and many, many more. So we're super excited to kind of learn uh, some of the tricks of the trade of this industry from uh, an actual porn director. So Dick Bush, thank you for being on today. Thank you for inviting me on. Great to be here. Yeah. So we're going to have a million questions for you today about all the things that happen on a porn set, some of your wildest stories. Uh, but to kick things off, can you just tell us how you got into this business and started directing porn? Uh, well, I've always wanted to be a filmmaker since I was really little. I'd always make silly little uh, films with my friends. And I went to the London Film School uh, when I was about in my, in my early 20s, graduated from there and um, found work at this porn company, a colleague of mine from the film school, he, uh, he said, why don't you come along? Um, there are jobs going. Uh, there's a spot to be an assistant editor. And I was like, at the, at the porn place where you're working? He said, yeah, come along. You probably <laughs> won't get the job because there are lots of other people with more experience uh, in editing going. But it's good to have uh, experience going for an interview. And I said, sure, that makes sense. Okay. So I went along, met the guys who owned this company, had a chat with them, and then they showed me into the editing suite. They had these a uh, couple of computers in there running Avid, and they sat me down and showed me this project where they had all this footage, and they said, there you go, just edit for 20 minutes, and um, we'll come back and see how you've done, all right? I go, oh, okay, and they <laughs> leave me in there, and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? And I had a little sneaky look at what the previous guy had edited. And he'd edited all of the acting stuff that led to the sex in the scene that we had to work with. And I figure they know that we can edit normal stuff. They want to see what we're like at editing the sex. So I thought, OK, I'm just going to start at the blowjob and just work my way forward from there. And as if in answer, Harry, the boss, a.k.a. has a big one, um, popped his head around the corner, gave me um, a little look and said, oh, and, oh, and Dick, lots of close-ups, okay? Gave me a thumbs up, <laughs> closed the door. I was like, all right, I guess I'm doing this the right way. 20 minutes later, he comes back in and says, okay, Dick, how are you getting on? And I go, whoa, 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 just hold on. I'm just building up to a crescendo. Just let me put these two clips down. And they drag me off the computer, send me on my way. And I didn't hear from them in a couple of days. And then my friend Alex rang me and said, uh, do you want the job? And I said, uh, okay, I, I guess I wasn't expecting to get it, but you shouldn't say no to a job right out of film school. Right. Um, and I started there and I was supposed to be there part time. And I ended up being there every day editing and I edited their their next movie which was called the cockwell inn which was about a pub called the cockwell inn <laughs> and within two weeks they got me filming i was behind a camera holding a camera and uh the rest is history really wow so i mean is that typical for a lot of people who are directors and porn to have gone to film school i don't think it is <laughs> to be honest <laughs> not at all um, so when you got in there, did you feel like I'm a little overqualified, so I'm going to like try and that's why you were like, I know I can handle the, the acting portion of this because that's, I assume what you were like working with when you were in school, but the porn seemed to be <laughs> something, I guess you just had a knack for. The, 
you get used to filming sex. It's all about angles and making stuff look right. And I've done it for 16 years now. I, I could do that in my sleep. It's the, the tough bit is getting the acting bits. Often we have a little storyline leading up to the sex and directing the performers in that and getting the shots and making it look as professional as possible. That's the challenge and that's what's kind of fun because it's not, that's not the easy bit. And especially if we're doing a movie where we want it to look as cinematic as possible and it's all about the lighting and the, the camera moves and sometimes, sometimes even emotion in, uh, <laughs> in porn films. No, it's uh, to, to that point, and, and for anyone who sort of isn't familiar with your work, when I was doing research before, like I know a lot of people joke sometimes saying, you know, oh, I, I just watch porn for the plot and the story. But like looking at your reel and the titles, these are very cinematic works. A lot of them are almost like full length features. And it seems like you really do focus on plot, emotion, setting up a unique story. So is that something that was important to you from the beginning? Like I'm going to take everything I've learned in film school and I'm going to, you know, take this super seriously and inject like real filmmaking and storytelling into these porn films. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I've always loved making films. So if you put a camera in my hand and there's a script in my hand, I'm going to make it look as good as possible. And it's been amazing that I've been able to write a lot of the, these movies and edit them as well. So they really feel like my stories that I've created and, you know, and seeing a story that you've written as a script become an actual film, which people are watching all over the world is such an incredible feeling as well, because it, you feel like that's, that's yours. So yeah, I have, um, I have a lot of love for a few of the, the movies that I've made. And how, how many did you say, um, you know, over the course of 16 years, how many films do you think you produce a year usually? Um, or direct, if I should say. If you're <laughs> counting each like scene, like a Brazza scene is a, a half hour scene with one sex scene in it. And then we do movies for Digital Playground, which are like three to five sex scenes. They're the, the feature length ones. If you're counting actual sex scenes, it's... <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> um, like hundreds, hundreds. It yeah. Must be. Like we, we shoot about seven or eight scenes, sex scenes in a month. So you can, you can do some maths if you like. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. I'm curious when you, so it's, it seems like this all happened so fast for you. And it seems like now you're operating at what seems to be kind of the highest level of porn directing. I mean, looking at like the reels, like I said, it seems like these are very high budget. Like there's a lot of people involved. Um, like you said, you're doing everything from like shorter scenes to kind of feature length. Uh, but did you take to this immediately? Like when they first put the camera in your hand after you got the editing job, was there a part of you that was worried? Oh, I might never like follow maybe what your original film path was. Uh, or did you just kind of own this and feel like you were sort of destined to make porn? Uh, my thought was, okay, I'll do this for six months, a year maybe, whilst trying to become an actual film director. Um, and I was at that first company that I had the interview with for two years. Uh, they lost some producing contracts with uh, Playboy, I think, and they had to let their production staff go. And then I... And I was like, oh, okay, so th this is a good excuse for me to try and make some movies of my own and try to get back to my original idea of what my career was going to be. But then another producer said, um, Dick, would you come and make movies for me? I will give you this amount of money. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. Okay, that's, that's more than I was making. And that's kind of what's happened throughout the 16 years. Every time I think, oh, okay, maybe I'll stop doing this and I'll try and do something a bit more serious someone says well here's a load of money would you come and make some movies i'm like okay sure is there just any part to like the movies is there any part of you that still has this 
like dream one day, you know what, I'm going to work on just a, not an adult movie, but just a regular type of movie or short or anything like that? Or have you done that in the past? Uh, I have done that. I made a short film um, last year with my sister, who's an actress. She wanted something for her showreel. And so I wrote this 15 minute short film called Scattered, which is about two sisters who are estranged and they meet up after many years of not seeing each other to scatter their mum's ashes. It's kind of, it's just a drama. And that, and that was so nice working with real actors and, and putting that together. And I've, um, I produced a YouTube comedy sketch show featuring porn stars. Each episode Mm -hmm. was half an hour long and it's just comedy bits. That was called the Dick Bush show on YouTube. So, and yeah, I still want to make some kind of feature film at some point. There are plans in the works. Nice. So to go back to what you said, the money that's in porn, I guess at your level, is it, are you taking home some serious cash from these projects? Like it's kept you in for 16 years and it seems like you love doing it, but, uh, to, to reach the level you are as a director in this industry, uh, what, what does that pay like if you can give us any insight? Um, it's pretty good, uh, just because it's constant. I think a lot of other producers and a lot of other people working in this industry, especially in Europe and, and I'm guessing in, in America as well, um, I, I've just had steady work constantly. There's just, like I said, I, I shoot maybe seven or eight scenes a month for Brazzers and Digital Playground at the moment. And I've been working with them for about 10 years now. And just the fact that it's constant and it's just always something there. And since lockdown and uh, the whole pandemic, lots of models are now. Uh, shooting their own stuff and uh, I have a few clients who hire me to come and shoot their stuff for their only fans so that's mm. added money as well so it's just it's just I think it's just that the fact that it's constant work um okay so the fact that like you're you're working constantly you have like you said seven or eight you're doing it in a month usually right yeah and then how often do people hit you up for like the side kind of stuff like the only fans and whatnot uh, I usually have, let's have a look at my calendar. What am I doing? So I've got uh, one, two, yeah, maybe maybe three jobs like that every month. Is that something you do by yourself? Or I was going to ask before how many people are like usually on working on a set uh, for a regular scene and then something for like an OnlyFans. Is that something that you just kind of like do yourself? Or, you know, is there also a little production for that as well? Uh, the OnlyFans stuff, it's usually just me and a makeup artist. That's that's the crew for an OnlyFans content shoot, mm-hmm. really. And then for the Brazzers and Digital Playground, bigger budget stuff. So I work with Danny's production company, Danny D's production company. And there's me on set. There's our second cameraman, Luke. We have our sound guy and general assistant josh we have our makeup artist liss so it's a four person crew plus danny and the uh the models so with the with that like the set and the crew i'm curious because as viewers of sort of the finished product and i know joe joe's a big browsers fan so he's very excited to talk about this uh like what's something that we would never realize that actually goes into the making of a porn film like i've heard that it's like very stop and go like the sex scenes aren't actually as fluid as they appear on camera Um, but anything about like the set or the process or the filming that would kind of shock a viewer who only gets to see the finished product Uh, i think everyone would probably be pretty shocked about how professional it all is and how um serious we take the uh, the looking at each other's std tests that they have to mm. get tested for and then we go through the models um do's and don'ts list so we can we go through uh, all these bits about 
positions and what level each model is comfortable working to. And uh, we also have a, um, our makeup artist also is a, uh, oh, what do we call it? A uh, Someone who just checks that the, the model is okay on set and they have their do's and don'ts list in front of them and they have to watch the sex scene as it happens. And they're there just to say, hey, she said that she didn't want to do that. Let's just... So it's all kind of prepared and professional. But we do have a lot of fun on set as well. Like we like to keep things quite light after we've done the whole serious meetings and, and production stuff. When we're filming, it's, it's just a lot of fun. And yeah, the sex can be a little stoppy and starty sometimes. The more it just flows, the better the sex usually is. And the little, the least I have to actually direct people the better the sex usually is so usually i'm just saying oh sorry can you just do that one more time or can you just put that leg just here just so yeah. i can get the good shots but danny knows what he's doing and he can just sort of move into positions the professionals always know the good positions to be in so from a director's point of view what makes a great porn star a great porn star is someone who has just natural charisma, someone who knows how to smile and sort of act in this way. Um, you know, get they have to be a bit of an actor. That's the thing. You, you I mean, you can you see lots of models that may be gorgeous, but if they have no personality and they're just not able to act properly or it's just very very wooden you just kind of go oh god hmm. but if they're if they're just full of charisma and they they get into the role that they're doing and you know big wide eyes that's a that's something i say on set a lot okay big eyes big eyes big eyes because hmm. you just want those kind of like oh moments there's this <laughs> thing there's this thing that we call the brazzers face and I'm sure you're aware of this. You'll see it on posters a lot or in pictures where a girl's got a cock in her hand and her face is just like, <gasps> yeah. like that. <laughs> we call that the Brazzers face. So we, we try to get some shots like that where she's like pulling the cock out at the, um, at the beginning and the, the camera will track into her face and she'll just be like, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> like some kind of anime face or something. All right. All right. That's interesting. W would you say to that point about you know, kind of acting and like hitting those type of cues of facial expressions. Is it sort of all fake orgasms and acting or do, are some of the scenes like, are, are the two actors or however many actors in a scene, like truly enjoying the sex? Um, we can always tell on set when the two people are really enjoying it and they're going for it. And it's like, wow, this is cool. This is going to come across on screen really easily. Mm -hmm. But I've also shot scenes which have been terrible on the day. Uh, there was a, we di I did a gangster movie for a UK company called Television X called Diamond Geezers. This is when I was, um, I first knew Danny and this was one of his scenes. And he, I think he'd had a little bit to drink the night before. He was incredibly hungover. He was working with his um, semi-girlfriend at the time. And the scene was just awful. Like, it just, nothing was happening. It was so stoppy and starty. It was like, sorry, I just need a drink. Sorry, guys, sorry about this. And we were thinking, oh, my God, this is like the worst scene we've ever shot so many edit points and i'm like don't worry it's, it's going to be fine when we edit it no one will, will know that there was any kind of difficulty and that scene went on to win a best sex scene award at one of um the, the award shows here in the uk and danny and i were like at this award show like what that <laughs> scene that wasn't that the scene like yeah that scene that was just fucking awful so it's all about editing in the yeah. end you can you can do anything with editing how many times do you think, you know, during, uh, I mean, maybe there's not like a, an official answer to this, obviously, but just like a roundabout, just to give people an idea during a, you know, a, a porn film or whatever, how many times is there 
a stop, hold on, let's reposition or stop, let's get here or whatever. Like how many times do you think that happens? Because when people watch it, it just seamlessly like it appears to just happen in real time. And then there's editing obviously, but how much of it is it like, hold on, everyone stop. And like, you know, how many times does that happen usually? Or is there times where it doesn't happen at all? Uh, it depends on the performers. So if, um, if I know them quite well and they're, they're very professional, they've done this for a long time, there's not a lot of stopping. Um, maybe occasionally just for a break, two minute break, grab a, some water or a, some lube or something. Um, but then there are other performers, if they're sort of kind of new, I have to tell them a bit more, okay, let's go into this position. Hold on, no, no, just put your legs here, back there. We, just, we work out the positions and then we'll go, okay, now do the transition from the position before into that. Um, so it really depends on who you're working with. Also, if we're doing pictures as well, we'll do the pictures before we do the video. And in the pictures, the performers can sort of find which positions work better for them in the set. Sometimes the sets aren't just a sofa or a bed. Like sometimes we're outside, sometimes we're in some kind of quarry or in a spaceship set that we've built and it's not comfortable at all and they have to find positions that, that they can get into but also looks cool and dynamic. Yeah, which I guess could not always be a natural position necessarily but if it looks good on camera you kind of have to make it work that's it we we like to say that if a position feels good then you're doing something wrong because that uh. doesn't look good on camera <laughs> just naturally you just kind of want to be as close to each other as possible but that you know you can't see the stuff so you sort of have to bend your body and open yourself up so you, they can see the camera can see the penetration right which is why you know, trying to mimic porn moves does it doesn't always translate in real life. Trust me. It's definitely not going to make the ladies feel good <laughs> if you're sort of fucking them at from an angle, trying to open up to an imaginary camera that's in the room. They're just going to look at you a bit strange. <laughs> a lot of guys have to learn that the hard way, I think, when we're younger. Uh, but also, I mean, I guess like sex in real life then when you think of, you know, it's, it's messy. It's not always consistent. Uh, you're not always having your best performance, like speaking from a guy's perspective, does that happen a lot? Um, with, I guess, speaking of like male porn stars that you work with and you're directing, like what if they can't get hard? What if they finish early? Like is part of your job kind of like ego management or making them feel okay if, if the performance isn't that strong and then how do you kind of, you know, work around that to, to still get what you need? Uh, yeah, that is a big part. Thankfully, it doesn't happen too often with the per with the people that I work with. But yeah, if if they're struggling to maintain an erection, you do have to get rid of any kind of worry. So there's there's always like a, a like I've always got one eye on the clock. If we're in a location, we've got it until a certain amount of time. But I don't want the performers to worry or know that there's a time limit. And I'll always say, don't worry, we've got all the time in the world. Just take a break, go have mm. two minutes. Um, sometimes you can sort of, you, you'll notice that someone just hasn't got the energy and maybe they just they haven't eaten that day. Remember there was one performer who was struggling and the producer I was working with took him aside and said, look, I know you're on a diet, but seriously, eat the fucking sandwich. <laughs> and uh, they just took five minutes, ate a sandwich, had a drink, five more minutes just to digest, got back into the scene and they were fine. It was just that they were out of energy. Nice. Yeah, I imagine it's it's hard to consistently perform like that in front of a, a group of people, cameras and lights. I mean, these are professionals, but I still imagine that like, you know, not everyone's going to have the best day of their life, um, you know, with this sort of thing. Um, also, with this job, I imagine that there are, you know, some maybe funny things that happen or these wild things that happens on set. Is there anything that kind of pops out in your mind as like a story where you're like, I will never forget that day on set? Uh, there are good and bad things. Like, there are always sort of sex accidents. Um, 
when I was in probably the first year of working for that first company, I was shooting a series called Askapades, which was great name. <laughs> where, and I was presenting it as well. I, I had a briefcase full of cash and it was sort of a gonzo thing. And I was going around, I had these five challenges and um, that crazy challenges where and one was to find a housewife and get her to have sex with a model and all this kind of stuff. We were shooting, and, it, and it's all anal as well. So we were shooting this one anal scene in a studio, and she was very new, and she had douched in her ass to clean it out, but there was still a lot of liquid in there. She hadn't sort of rinsed properly, and we got into this reverse cowgirl position, her and the model, and she just happened to lift herself up, and this gush of brown liquid just poured out all over this guy's crotch and he was like oh god oh no and the second cameraman was like dry heaving in the corner it was it was immense and but but you can't make the models feel embarrassed you have to say hey don't worry happens all the time it doesn't happen all the time <laughs> <laughs> happens all the time don't worry yeah do you want to just go with the makeup artist and get cleaned up and we'll yeah. just oh we'll put some towels down and We'll get sorted and start filming again. Oh, my God. So those, those kind of things happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then there are, there are kind of fun situations as well. Like when sometimes we go on location and we'll stay on location to film a few scenes. And um, this was a long time ago for another company. Um we had an assistant who was just starting with us and he got given this um, e-cigarette, but it, was, it wasn't it was filled with like tobacco type e-liquid. It was filled with uh, more potent stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. And he, took, he was smoking this stuff given to him by, by a, a porn star and he just kind of reacted to it a little crazy and he got so paranoid because we're all kind of jokers he was like you know no you're you're going to do something on you you're going to do something and he took a knife from the the kitchen and ran outside and hid in the hedges in the bushes outside of this place and <laughs> we had to go looking for him but everyone was terrified because he was just uh, holding on to this knife <laughs> <laughs> just the weirdest things happen on set sometimes. Wow. wow. That is the last thing I would have expected on a porn like set. Just like, yeah, some guy just, you know, got super paranoid, grabbed a knife and was just hiding from us. It was terrifying. We had to go on a manhunt. I would have never <laughs> guessed that. <laughs> yeah, these things happen. Sometimes do you want do you want to hear about the worst day, the day where everything went wrong on a shoot? Yeah, let's let's hear about this worst day. So this was a a uh, film for Television X, a company here in the UK. And I'd stayed over at the location the night before to get an early start. Uh, in the morning, I realized I had forgotten the costumes, which were flight attendant costumes. They were still in my flat. And so I had to, I was like, I was talking to the producer, don't worry, I'll drive home quickly and get them. Uh, went to my car. I'd parked in the wrong place and I had a, and my wheel was clamped. So I was like, oh, fuck. Okay. Um, I didn't have time to ring the person. So I had to get the train back to my, my flat, pick up the costumes, came back, dealt with the, uh, the clamp on my wheel. We started filming. Uh, we had four or five models in these flight attendant outfits and a guy as a pilot and we are filming around London, and we sneakily filmed some bits in um, London City Airport, which is one of the smaller airports in London. And, and we were just outside, and then the police stopped us and said, look, you can't film in the, uh, the airport. What are you guys filming? And we just said the truth that we're shooting a, a porno 
all legal, gave details. They wanted to see that what we'd been filming and check that we hadn't been filming any sex outside or anything like that. So I took the camera. This was back in the days when we had tapes. So I was rewinding the tapes and showing them. And they were like, okay, cool. All right. Uh, We carried on filming a little bit, um, came back to the uh, location and shot the sex and everything. And it was at the end of the day where I realized that when I rewound the tape, to show the police officers, I didn't then fast forward it back to where we left off. So I had uh, recorded over ooh, yeah. nearly everything that we had shot outside. And we had to grab the guys and be like, oh God, just come out. I just need at least one shot of you walking outside. <laughs> it was just, it was a day where just everything went wrong. Well, wow. I, I honestly didn't even consider that because I remember even when I was super young, the first camera I ever got was like that. It was on tape. So in order to do quote unquote editing you just had to r- rewind the tape and then record over that so i can can only imagine with the amount of editing and the production that you guys are talking about that you're doing now how you can replicate that back in the day when it is tapes and you have to rewind and do it, it must have been a nightmare back then um well it's kind of there's just you back then you know you could took the tape you put it into the tape deck and then you digitize everything right on onto the onto a hard drive so it's so, you, so now when we we just record to um uh you know cards or hard drives or whatever right right you just you just skip out that bit because everything's digitized anyway were you able to salvage that uh film yeah uh, yeah like the scene the intro was a bit shorter we didn't have any of the the cool stuff that we shot around the uh, the airport but you know, it's, it was enough. You made it work. <laughs> yeah. No, you always just, make it work. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious with you doing this for so long and, you know, this being your job, does it affect your personal, like, sex life, relationships in any way? Are you, um, you, know, I'm, you might be in a relationship now, but are you, you know, always upfront and honest about your work? Uh, yeah, always honest. Um, I've I've been on some dating apps and i don't put in the profile that i'm a porn director and i don't ever tell someone right away you don't you know because if you introduce yourself hi i'm rick um i'm a porn director they're gonna look at you like oh jesus this guy's just a creep (laughs) so i always say that i'm a filmmaker and i'll just naturally let the conversation go that way hopefully we've had some conversations so they know that i'm just a, a normal nice guy and if they ask what kind of films I make, I, I just say, well, they're sort of silly films with lots of nudity in it. And like, what do you mean porn? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> I, do. I do. I wonder if that puts like pressure on anyone you're with, like to have really good sex or like if they think that you're going to be judging them. I think that has been the case. Um, there's no There's no reason to because because sex in porn and sex in real life are just are so different. But I think a lot of people don't, don't often see that. So, um, yeah, I have been told that there has been a lot of pressure and just because I'm around models all the time there, there can be a little bit of jealousy as well. Yeah. But they probably go super hard for you though in the bedroom they're probably like oh i'm gonna show this guy that i have what it takes (laughs) that that would explain it yeah (laughs) (laughs) unless you're just directing them the whole time (laughs) i try not to actually i I feel like (laughs) if i just start yeah you know what when i started within the first year of of doing this kind of working in this industry i did get more confident as a person just because my job was sort of directing people and telling people what to do. So I felt more confident sort of telling people what to do. Yeah. And you should sort of tell people what to do in the bedroom. You shouldn't just sort of lay there going, well, maybe oh, this isn't nice, but I kind of want them to do this. You do have to be vocal and it is good right. to sort of um, communicate with your partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's I was wondering too. 
I was wondering too, like what, what is your relationship with porn as a consumer? Cause I imagine like it's your job and you kind of know everything and you know, you, you know, what's actually going on in these scenes. Like, does that kind of ruin it for you? Do you not like indulge in porn at all? Um, no, I'll watch porn. Um, but I mean, nothing I've made myself and nothing with people in that I know personally, cause that, you know, it's just a bit weird. Yeah. Um, but I, I'll also like part of my brain is always in work mode. So just like whenever I'm watching Netflix or YouTube, I might think, Hey, that would be, I could take that and use that kind of idea and, and pornify that when I'm watching <laughs> porn, I might also go, Oh God, that's a terrible shot. What are you doing? What is the cameraman doing? Not, not <laughs> like that. You should be under here. Get over the top. What are you doing? That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's probably hard to turn off. Is it, um, this is a weird question. I don't really know how to ask this, but I was always curious. So like the set and like the cast and crew, like are you guys like turned on and like horny while filming or do you just like completely separate your job from work and just, just completely professional or like, do you want to be turned on by the work you're doing? Cause is that sort of a good sign? I don't know. Does that question make sense? Um, I, I can only speak for myself, but I, I, it just tends to be work. So I'm never really turned on because I'm always, especially if we're getting through quite a, a chunky script, I'm just going, okay, get this, get that. And then when it comes to the sex, it's, it's also just, you know, I'm holding this camera, which isn't too heavy, but after half an hour of holding it, it does get quite heavy and I just want everything to go super smoothly just so I can, it can all be done and everything went to plan. So I'm more just thinking about shots. Okay, go there. Okay. They moved here. I'm going to go here. Okay. It was, oh, God, I'm coming for a close up. go back here. So that's what my brain is doing rather than, wow, she looks really fit. Occasionally there will be moments where maybe I've had a personal connection with the model or something and, She'll give me a look and a look is going to turn me on a lot more than me just looking at people mm, having sex, mm. to be honest. You know, it's all about interpersonal stuff. So when I'm filming, I tend to be in work mode. Yeah. Uh, is there a specific shot that is the most important in every single, like, I don't know, is there sort of like a one-on-one, like this is the shot that you always have to get or the most important or like, you the know, is the shot. intro or the money shot or the, the, the intro or like, is there, what is the most like, you know, everyone's like, all right, you got to be focused for this part of the film or is there even one? Well, you guys know the answer to that, to what the most important shot yeah, is. Yeah, just say it's what you mean, Joe. <laughs> it's the no, shot I'm asking, you maybe a second take. I'm not going to assume because I don't know. I'm not on set. <laughs> I don't direct, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, we there is that that money shot, that pop shot, as we call it, that um, everyone's waiting for. So we we usually when we're filming, um, we'll I'll look at the sound guy who's also looking at how long we've um, shot for. And he'll say like, okay, one more minute to go. I'll say, cool. And I'll explain, okay, guys, but one more minute of shooting. If you um, build up in this position and then get into the pop shot position and we work out where they're going to be, maybe uh, the female model on her knees, male model standing up is usually what it is. So we get them in the position where they're going to go to. They go back into the sex position shoot for the minute they get into that position and i get that in a wide we cut and then we move the cameras in closer sort of over the shoulder shot we bring a slow-mo camera in as well which is shooting slow motion at the same time the guy gets himself ready and good to go and we're all just kind of waiting there with our cameras just fingers over the record button and we'll get the nod from him okay ready okay cool bring out the clapperboard Okay, roll sound, roll cameras, scene 23, take one, clap. And he gets into position, we're all rolling, and he blows his load all over her face, and uh, and then she kind of plays with it or whatever, 
and we cut and that's that's it what i like to do sometimes is go yeah that was great just one more time please <laughs> and the guy looks at me like what <laughs> nah, just kidding just kidding yeah that's a lot of pressure to like get the shot and also like a lot of moving parts to just come in front of someone it's like yeah, all right, i'm about to be ready all right now move in the cameras the clapper get ready like that's it seems like that break probably feels like forever for the guy yeah sometimes um we have to sort of do it in reverse so if a guy is saying okay i'm probably gonna come immediately as soon as i'm ready we'll we'll go okay so we will do the uh, clapperboard which syncs the sound that we're recording with the cameras we'll do that at the end of the shot so as soon as the guy says okay I'm ready we'll just press record everyone's doing it he does his business and then at the end we um we film the clapperboard get the clap at the end hmm wow wow that was quite the production i mean right there i mean that uh, you just described the entire thing i feel like i was there <laughs> nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, people really love behind the scenes footage of porn movies because you don't get to see it too often. Yeah, I, no, that's super I feel like it, also taken for granted in a way, you know, you're, you're just watching it. You're not really considering the fact that there's a team of people here making this happen. You know, people just don't, I guess, I guess people who, who are not familiar with production in any sort of level don't really understand that. Like when you're at a movie, there's like a hundred people there like making this happen and, mm you know, people two blocks away that are involved in this movie somehow, you know, like it's, it's like a whole thing. So it is interesting to hear from you, um, you know, the behind the scenes stuff and getting your, um, you know, your knowledge and expertise on the entire thing. And we appreciate you coming on and, 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 uh, you know, disclosing all of that to us. Well, you are very welcome. Yeah, no, thank you. That was a lot of fun. And, um, I guess for anyone listening or watching, if you want to check it out, it's uh, your work's pretty easy to find if you search Dick Bush porn videos. Um, but any anything else that you want to plug or anywhere that people could find you to kind of keep up with everything you're doing? Uh, sure. Me and Danny D have just started our own podcast called Smash City. Um, that's on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram at Smash City X. Nice. Great name. Awesome. We'll, we'll definitely be checking that out. Um, but yeah, good luck with everything. And uh, thanks so much for your time today. You too, guys. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're going through a challenge in life right now, you are not alone. Whether it's a career change, the beginning or end of a relationship, becoming a parent, there's no user manual to life, so it's normal to feel stuck sometimes. Luckily, there are therapists who are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills. I was hesitant to start therapy at first, but now I honestly can't imagine life without it. And if you're looking to get started, you should really give BetterHelp a chance. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with the therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. So you can start BetterHelp and you can keep your search going until you find that person that's truly a fit for you. It could not be simpler. There's no waiting rooms. There's no traffic. There's no endless searching for the perfect therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash OPL. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash OPL for 10% off your first month. So definitely give therapy a try. We want to tell you guys about Bond Charge. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence based products to optimize your life in every way. It was founded on science, inspired by nature, and all of their products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. For example, I'm at a computer a lot and I used to get headaches from just sitting down, the light from my computer or phone because I'm always on it. And I got computer glasses, which I'm wearing right now, actually. These aren't real glasses, they're computer glasses. 
and they help tremendously with headaches, sore eyes, digital eye strain, watery eyes, fatigue, all the things that I would feel from just working and staring at a, sc a screen all day long. I also used to suffer from pretty poor quality sleep and I got the blue light blocking glasses, which help with poor sleep, fatigue, low energy. They've honestly helped with jet lag, which is really cool. So Boncharge has these products uh, that really help you with your everyday life to feel better and get rid of some of those symptoms from just constantly staring at screens all day long. I love them because they're science backed technology. Unlike a lot of these other brands, uh, they're putting in the work to really understand the products that they're making and how they're filtering out the light to really optimize the product. Their glasses come in prescription, non-prescription, they have reading options as well, and they have glasses for every need. There's easy returns and exchanges, and they ship worldwide in rapid time. And Bond Charge is currently having a Black Friday sale with a massive 25% off site-wide until November 30th. So you can go to bondcharge.com, you can choose your favorite wellness products, and the discount code will automatically be applied at checkout. So that's bondcharge, B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E.com, and the 25% off discount code will automatically be applied at checkout. So definitely go check that out. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about getting gifts for people. Whether it's a friend or the friends in your pants, you can make this season a jolly one with Manscaped. So do your little drummer boy a favor and use the Lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products and have people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about a sack, and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and use code OPL for free shipping and 20% off. Personally, I used to not have a grooming routine, so to be honest, I was a mess. Super inconsistent, not always prepared down there for the big moments, if you know what I mean, but since discovering Manscaped, that has changed. I have my routine now. Their Platinum Package 4.0 is a one-stop shop uh, for the man who deserves it all. It's the perfect gift, even if it's a gift for yourself. And my favorite thing is their proprietary advanced skin safe technology. It protects the goods. It makes sure that you're not nicking anything down there, which I used to do a lot with other razors. Um, I hate to say it hurt, but not anymore with Manscaped. They have a ton of other awesome grooming products for men and you get 20% off and free shipping with the code OPL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code OPL. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. And honestly, it makes a really, really good gift for any guys in your life. All right. Well, there you have it. Dick Bush. Dick Bush. That's his real name, too. No shot. But. No, nah, no shot. I was going to ask, but then he uh, he said Dick Rick. Bush. He said Rick at one point. He, he did, so I was but like, yeah, also right. Dick Bush. There's I mean, no way. There's no way. But if it if that it's a great is, name though, great of moniker, course. Dick Bush. It commands respect in the it industry. It does. It does. It's like I'm not beat, I'm not like you know beating around the bush. He's not I'm beating Dick around Bush. The bush. Yeah, he's you know going right I mean? right through the bush. Yeah, he's fucking mowing the bush down. Um, but yeah, honestly, yo, that was I, with the way that he was describing the fucking cum shot of this video was just like, you know, dude, pressure. Like we want to give all this credit to athletes. You know, Michael Jordan was so good at hitting the clutch shot in the fourth quarter. But, you know, these people, I'm sure they get used to it after doing it. But porn actors like that is a lot of pressure to overcome and a lot Hell yeah. to get comfortable with to be on set like that, to be in front of strangers each time to, you know, make it look perfect to kind of act while you're doing it. Like it's yeah, there's there's a lot could never do it, could never, ever do it. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, not in the cards for me. But uh, yeah, no, a lot of pressure uh, and also just like a, a big production. You know, I mean, the guy's the director, clearly. I mean, he was telling us the whole thing. He's like, all right, we're going to move this guy in. We're going to do this clapboard. Blah, blah. It's like for porn, baby. For porn. And it's, it's, it's good to know, I guess, as uh, consumers that the people behind the scenes making this happen, they really care and they really take everything seriously. Oh, yeah. 
and you know for him too just for like safety and everything of of the actors themselves and how serious they are with the std tests and what's consensual and he how he said like models have a list of do's and don'ts I, yeah and that's good to hear like a writer it's like listen i'm not fucking doing anal today dude yeah yeah you yeah that, I mean? that's that's important um but yeah crazy crazy industry uh crazy, good, good crazy for him. industry yeah it's nice to get like a peek behind the curtain with some of these jobs and there you go. That was one of them. Uh, for anyone out there that wants to be a guest on our show, hit us up. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com uh, and uh, send us an email. We'll get back to you. Yeah, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at OPL Podcast for uh, some of the best clips from the show. And uh, shout out to the patrons. You could head over to patreon.com slash OPL show and join that community. And uh, we're using the funds to make donations to different, different people, different organizations. So go check that out. And that is all. That is all. See you guys next time.